as entrepreneurs, we know the power of connections. We focus on connections. It's the opportunity to really make a difference. Everything we do is all about the relationships we have. And if we want to make a big difference in the world, we've got to have those connections. So one of the challenges, though, is sometimes we don't connect with the people who are most important to us in our life. I have a serial entrepreneur, a very good friend, an unbelievably talented, remarkable individual who's had his success in real estate, thousands of properties, all kinds of uh, success there. But he started a new business really to serve other entrepreneurs in taking advantage of connections. This is so important to all of you. Stay tuned. You're going to be really glad you did. Ordinary success? No way. You want amazing, remarkable, exceptional breakthroughs. Dig deep. Think bold. Drive hard. Watch yourself soar beyond your dreams. AESNation.com Jim Shields, I am so excited to have you here with me. You know, we have not done anything virtually. We've always been together and I've always been blown away with how talented you are. And I, I'm so excited to share you with our fellow entrepreneurs here at AESNation.com. Thanks, John. Yeah, it's a little different being virtual because we're usually face to face, but it's an honor and a pleasure to be here. No, it, it really is. And one of the reasons I wanted to have Jim join us, I mean, you know, he could talk so much about being a successful entrepreneur and, he, and he's been you know, really successful in real estate and continues to be successful in real estate. But along the way, he really discovered where he had, you know, another unique ability and it's all about connections. And I'm going to let him describe what he does, but I've sat in meetings for years uh, where some of my fellow entrepreneurs in our mastermind groups uh, with Joe Polish, uh, the Genius Mastermind uh, Network, and, and Jason uh, Gennarda, the uh, uh, Mastermind Talks, we, 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 you'll just see hearing story after story of people who have taken Jim up on what he does and how it has transformed their lives. So, Jim, you know, how, give me a little backstory. I mean, you know, you didn't, I don't think you woke up, you know, at five, uh, at the age of five, at five in the morning and say, I'm going to be the expert on connections. How did, how did this all come together? Yeah, no, I, it's funny, John, you're right. And it's kind of still, it's odd to look back and go, how did this happen? But it, it was a kind of a slow effect and then a snowball effect. And it really started to happen after I had success in real estate when I would be invited back to different, different events and personal development or entrepreneurship events and I'd get to speak. And honestly, John, I got to see behind the curtain and I saw a lot of people successful uh, on stage. It was almost like the great and powerful Oz. They were successful on stage. Uh, but behind the curtain, was it was a con man from Omaha, maybe not necessarily with their balance sheet. Uh, but with the relationships in their life, and they were completely alone. Uh, and I, that really terrified me. I didn't want to be one of those people. This is before I had a family, and I just figured life's too short to, to live on the surface. You know, there comes a point where everyone needs connection, everyone needs relationships, and I really started to pursue that with family life. Um, and with me and my business partner, who we've grown up since we were age three together, it was a, it was, it was a small knit group of us surfers. We were all entrepreneurs. We were all surfers. And on these trips that we originally called board meetings, you know, the pun on words for surfers, we designed first a strategy to make sure that we never put our kids second place to anything, uh, starting with the closest relationship, especially our children. And then based off of this, we, we designed retreats for entrepreneurs and their children. That, as far as I know, we're the only ones that do that. There's plenty of places that you and I can go to to learn and to grow or we can send our kids off to to learn and to grow but there's nothing that really actually brings them together to learn and grow at the same time and that's what our board meetings retreats do so the focus of our business was sharing our strategy which now has pretty much gone viral to thousands of entrepreneurs all over the world using it to have a deeper more regimented more consistent relationship with their children which as you know for us entrepreneurs is very hard because <laughs> we go in seven different directions um, and then we take it even deeper with our retreats where our goal is to 
have fun, but at the same time deepen the connection and, and introduce them to lessons that aren't taught in school, John, that you and I have discovered through Genius Network and Jason's events and other things. But I think why have them wait till the age of 25 or 30? You know, why not start at the age of 12? Jim, this is so valuable what you're doing. I mean, so many of us as entrepreneurs, we're charging, charging. I mean, you know, it, it's so easy not to take care of those relationships that are most important to us in life. And, and what I see even sometimes, you know, we compound the problem by not only not taking care of them, but we, we almost insulate them, isolate them from the world and all the lessons that we learn to get to where we are. So, you know, I mean, we're, we're giving them some serious handicaps and you've done with your partner, you know, such a great job of really, you know, you have, you title it experiential education and, you know, these retreats that you do, it's, uh, I, I'm you know, hearing from the, uh, the people who have participated in this and the connections, particularly with their kids. Uh, I don't have children. I, you know, I've joked with you that I've been thinking about leasing some of my friends' kids. And <laughs> I think some I wouldn't have to pay very much. They might pay me <laughs> to take them. But I mean, it's, it's transforming not only for the child, but for the parent and brings this closeness. And I, I'd love to walk through the six pillars that you talk about and you, you work because this is uh, so powerful. I mean, the first one you start with is, you know, the confident mindset. And these, you know, not only our kids, you know, usually young kids, it's pretty easy to be insecure, but oftentimes adults are insecure. I mean, how do, how do you help them with this? Well, John, first of all, I agree with you. And it's funny that we start with confidence mindset because we've interviewed thousands of entrepreneurs. Um, and when, when we said, what are you most concerned that you want your child to learn? What do you think can help them the most? What do you think school is not providing? Mindset always comes up and confidence is one of the biggest concerns because without confidence, there's not much we can accomplish. Not cockiness, but confidence. So as you know, with our retreats, the ocean is our, is our classroom. Um, I believe kids are inspired by their environments. And if you remember those old classrooms, and I don't want to beat up on education too much with the fluorescent lighting and you want to bite your own arm off sometimes and you know go right to sleep so our our we use the ocean um, and, and we use a couple of different things to get kids not being lectured but to be doing um, and 95 percent of the people that come to us have never surfed a day in their life we have the occasional Australian that comes up that's been surfing since they came out of the womb mm -hmm. um, but most of them have never surfed um, so most of the lessons we use on confidence mindset is things uh, that they do writing um, and then things that they do doing. And so the ocean, for example, one of the best ways we've been able to teach confidence is to paddle people offshore, which means that me or my business partner and our team will take them out into the ocean on paddle boards, and they've never been that far offshore before, or pushing them into their first wave. You know, we've done lots of different events where we've brought staffs out before their big event the day and taking them surfing and getting into that flow uh, and that confidence to say, because surfing has this kind of mystery around it, saying, oh, unless you were born in Hawaii, you can't surf, you're going to kill yourself. That's total, that's total lie. It's a farce. And, and just the act of getting a kid who might be a little afraid of the ocean, might believe some, some scariness of it up on his first wave in surfing, believe it or not, it's one of the best ways we do it. Um, also, the, the other thing we use for confidence mindset is I've become a huge fan of journaling. Um, and I've journaled for years. Uh, but we've started to use the five-minute journal, which I know you heard discussed quite a bit at, at the last event we were at together. And we bring the kids through it for the three, four days that they're with us. So we actually bring them through so we get them started on it. But the five-minute journal brings about what are you grateful for? What is it you want to accomplish today? What are affirmations? You know, And these are things that I never learned about in school. I don't know about you, John, but I believe in affirmations. I believe in showing gratitude and writing the things down and also setting clear objectives for the day. Um, these things build trust in yourself and confidence, and it's part of our retreat. You know, so much of education is really about, uh, you know, and, and traditional is getting us ready to work in the factories, you know, to get it yeah. regimented. And, you know, and, the, and I love the idea of the ocean. I, I'm 59. Last year, I, t I had never surfed, and I never got around to it. I grew up in upstate New York, and there wasn't good surfing there. And uh, you know, I've lived in California now for well over 30 years, and 
I finally broke down. I was down at La Jolla and did it. And uh, I was amazed how much fun it was. And, uh, you know, it's something that I will repeat anytime I'm near warm water. <laughs> type, yeah. Uh, yeah. Northern Good. California. Well- well, yeah. now I know we're getting you out soon, John. Yeah, no. You know this. Yeah, no. Well, and, and uh, you <laughs> talked about the confidence. I always think of it as kind of the uh, – I always like the term quiet confidence. We, we we have the privilege of coaching some of the top financial advisors in the world in one of our businesses. And and, and it's not, you know, as you said, arrogance, uh, but having that quiet confidence to face life and be appreciative, you know, share the gratitudes and so on. And, and these are lessons that, you know, we're teaching, you know, probably 40 to 70 year olds and some of the most successful people in the world in finance. And, you know, to have that early on, you know, to have that confidence mindset so that they can face challenging uh, really parts of life because nobody gets out of life unscarred, but having that positive mindset is so powerful. The, the other thing I like is a po- uh, the second one, the, the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial vision, you know, pillar, because, you know, as kids, um, unless your parents were aren't entrepreneurial and I, I was blessed actually, both my parents were, uh, you, you don't learn that in school. I didn't at least, and, you know, to my knowledge, other than a little passing of it, it's not done. And, you know, you introduce it right away. I, you know, why do you do it and how do you do it, Jim? Okay, a couple of ways we introduce entrepreneurial vision, which is something definitely not taught in school. It's real important to, okay, when you go to a, a, a mastermind, John, and you go home, is it, it's pretty hard to explain what happened to your wife or a friend or, or whoever. And same thing for your clients. I'm sure if they've been involved with good mastermind groups where you go uh, and, and you expand your businesses, your creativity, it's tough to go home and explain it, um, but especially to a child. A big part of our retreats is not only getting out in the ocean, but coming in and having focused reflections of what happened and also letting each entrepreneur in the group share a little bit about their story, a little bit about their scars. Mm-hmm. Um, and where did they come from? I mean, some of the people were, were how their businesses were formed. I mean, you joke, the entrepreneur line does not go like this. The yeah. entrepreneur line is all over the place. And just to hear these short stories from each of our people allows the children to start saying, wow, where did that came out of nowhere? And then we actually bring them through an exercise where they're allowed to dream as big as they want and go into a talent that they have that they might not talk about and what could they do with it. I don't want to hear that it's never been done. It's probably one of the most powerful things. I mean, a lot of the parents get to tears when they see their kid get up because the way, you know how Walt Disney created uh, Disney World? Mm -hmm. He created them in dreaming rooms. He put himself in a room. He said, you're not allowed to talk to me about labor issues, accounting, this problem, that problem. I'm going to create something that's never been done because I didn't like bringing my daughters to the creepy amusement parks where these crazy guys are running rickety down rides. I'm going to change the whole thing. And by putting himself in this space and asking some powerful questions, he was able to create things. I want kids to be able to start doing that at a young age. Um, And it also rekindled some things in the adults. I told you we just did a retreat this weekend. We're saying, you know, I've created this big successful business. I want to keep running it. But there's always been this passion of mine that I know I could do. So it's reawakening. So it's a pretty exciting double plus concept, if that makes sense. But just letting them hear other entrepreneurs mastermind and tell their story and then going through that exercise, that's a huge way where we start entrepreneurial vision at a young age. You know, this is something as entrepreneurs we all take for granted. I mean, I mean, really, AES Nation is a virtual mastermind. I'm, you know, I've had uh, the privilege of being around a lot of entrepreneurs like yourself, Jim, and just I love just sharing, you know, bringing what you're doing to make you know such a difference in the world, and the kids don't get that. I mean, it's a, a huge missed opportunity, and and I, I I know you well enough to know that it didn't go you know straight up, it didn't go exponential, you know, it was a little wobbly, and you and I have both had wobbles along the way, and. Yeah, you know, but this is the entrepreneurial story, and that's part. You know, it's you know the way it's cliche, but you know it's not the destination; it's the journey. And yeah. as kids start hearing this, all of a sudden, you know, they come alive too. Yeah, well, and it's funny, John. You remember in school, and I agree. There's reasons for this. They say, you know, you 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 don't look on the guy's paper next to you or the girl's paper next to you, and that serves its purpose for doing your own work. But in the real world. 
I, I'm looking on your paper. I'm looking on who. I'm oh, looking well, on well my, you and I, I there's paper. no Please. economic <laughs> stuff here at all. And we're, you know, I want to promote you. You know, the cooperation among entrepreneurs is just huge. And yeah. you, you get your hand slapped with a ruler, at least the school I went to, and none yeah. would hit you uh, <laughs> yeah. if you did that. And, you know, so, I mean, you know, to see that all coming together is so amazing. Yeah, it is. It is. And it opens their mind to say, wow, you guys aren't in competition. I mean, a few kids asked that this week, and I said, competition? Well, no way. You know, and there are people that some that did exactly what we did. We said we share ideas and we help each other in downtimes, and 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 they've given me an idea that they didn't use, but I used. And you know, that it's sharing each other's paper. You're not hiding it; you're sharing it, and that's a totally different way of creating vision. I mean, I'm sure with the masterminds we've been in, there's been better visions that have come out from it if you'd been sitting at home trying to. Do it on your own. That, I mean, that's why you and I are here. Yeah. Um, well, that's why we write the checks to be in these meetings to do that because we know the power of it. And, you know, and, and I think you know, both of us have this vision of abundance. And it really goes to the third pill pillar that you're talking about, the financial empowerment. And, you know, how, how do you help children with this, you know, or you, a young adults with this? Because, you know, you know, money means so many different things to different people. Yeah, it's it, it's it means a lot of different things, but uh, I believe money can be a source of freedom and space to do the things you really want to do. Um, and the biggest we we hear all this bullying, bullying about the new bull, you know, the issue with bullies in school. Um, I believe the biggest bully in life is lack of financial intelligence. If you don't get a grasp on the basic fundamentals of money, your children will be bullied their entire life. And I know you work with a lot of very successful wealth managers and financial advisors um, that are working with high net worth people and handling their money. But we have to pass it down to the children because you know it. If even even wealthy kids, if they don't learn the fundamentals, they can lose that money in one generation. And unfortunately, that's a that's a common theme. It um, seems almost overnight because they so often what happens is. That was where I was talking about the isolation. You know, we've, we've had success, we're affluent, we want to protect our kids from going through all the pain that we did, but we protect them from the life lessons, particularly on the financial side. Yeah, exactly, and, and they have to feel pain, and I feel the best way for them to experience this is, is we play financial games. So they get to understand how, how um, cash flow works, how expenses work, versus the money that you have in flowing. Uh, I, I, I graduated from a four-year college, which we were discussing before, which we, we both drank beer at many years ago. Um, but I, I had a degree in business, and I didn't understand, John, when I left school what a return on investment was. I mean, there should have been classes upon classes. I think it was one definition discussed in an economics class I didn't even understand. So I, I think that Financial intelligence has to be able to be applied to the everyday life, um, you know, with with mortgages, with with investment opportunities. I mean, there's three real ways I know to make money, and that's to own businesses or parts of businesses, to own stocks and bonds, and to own real estate. Those are the three ways. So we start to teach the kids the three main ways to make money, on how to leverage off of it, and also, do you live off of principal or interest? Well. Your people know, as, as successful advisors, who wants to live off their principal? You want to grow your interest and grow your interest. These are simple concepts that if we can embed in our children early and do it through games where the risk is fun and the loss is, is oh, man, but, but they catch the lesson, no, then I, I think it can change things. Yeah, I, and I know you are. I mean, we're hearing the feedback. And I want to go to pillar four because, I mean, you know, we, we talk about financial and so often – you know, people get, geez, you know, it's kind of greedy and all this. As entrepreneurs, we know that's not. It's, it's creating value, and that's the only way we get paid for doing it, but also for making a difference in the world. So many of us have this higher purpose what we want to do, and it's, you call it conscious uh, contribution. How do you bring that into the kids? Well, conscious contribution, when I interviewed, again, tons of entrepreneurs, a biggest concern, John, for a lot of successful entrepreneurs – and I'm sure your, your clients understand, is they want their kids to appreciate what they have. We've mm -hmm. worked hard, and like you said, we've protected them. 
Um, but no one wants to have a spoiled brat. No one wants to have the next Ebenezer Scrooge. They want them to have, have connection and quality connection. So what we do is we want the kids to actually say we appreciate what they have. So, for mm -hmm. example, at our retreats, we figure the best way to, to uh, express this is, is to pay a gift forward. So for the first two days of our retreat, we teach people how to surf that have never surfed. On the third day of our retreat, um, we bring out friends of ours that are severely handicapped or actually paraplegic or quadriplegic. So these are paralyzed people, children mostly, that cannot surf on their own. And as a group, we teach children how to take these people out in the ocean, which is a very serious situation. Um, and it's a, it's a huge group effort. I mean, the inspiration that we get from this is incredible. And then we bring them back in after a few hours in the ocean with these paralyzed, disabled surfers. And we have what we call a focused reflection. We do the activity, and that's experiential education. We come in and we talk about it. And John, if I had a dollar for every time a kid said, wow, I never really appreciated what I had. Because we were talking about the basic function of your hands or your legs or being able to just walk out in the ocean by yourself and take a swim. I mean, for these people, it was a huge ordeal to even get to the ocean and then that to be carried out and put on the board and have 25 people around you going down each little part of a small wave to make sure you're okay. That's how we teach it. I know another person um, from Tom's Shoes, Blake Mikowski, with his shoe drops, if you read about those, mm -hmm. we hear about shoe executives that go down and actually deliver the, the charity shoes and break down in tears for the first time. And their children have said in interviews, it's the first time I respected my parent. So it works both ways. We're... Um, uh, look, entrepreneurs, we know, John, I don't need to argue that for us or our audience. We're some of the most generous people there are. Um, it's, in our creation ability, we don't want to keep it for us. We want to give it out to the world. Um, but for children who haven't built it on their own yet, it's so important to instill that. Um, so I, don't, I think we shouldn't overshelter them. And we try not to by showing them people with these disabilities and these issues. And, and the results, are, they're lifelong. They're lifelong. I mean, we have kids from years ago saying that one day of helping so-and-so in the surf who couldn't walk changed my life. So yeah, that's, and it carries into other areas of life. It's a big wow. I mean, I didn't know that part and I can see just how powerful it would be. You know, the, you know, so much of what you're doing is connections and the fifth pillar is quality connections. And, you know, with today's technology, parents and kids are connected you know, texting, Skyping, uh, FaceTime, you know, and geez, even the phone, uh, and so much more, you know, but they're not quality. You know, how, how do you yeah. help with, you know, this, you know, kind of superficial connections that we all have, you know, not only with the kids, but just in life in general, how do we prepare so that we can really, because the richness of great connections. Yeah, well, and connection is so important. There's a lot of tough guys out there, John, that try to power through it. And like we discussed, Ned Hollowell from Harvard Medical School, who's in the mastermind group with us, said, you know, lack of connection causes early death, causes depression, lethargy, loss of purpose. You know, I think that could affect anyone's performance and overall value of life. Um, and for connection for us, we found a, a recipe that I think works really well. Um, the format for our retreats and our board meeting strategy, which I'm happy to share, you know, an ebook with your people so that they can run with it for their own family, share with their clients, um, and it, it works. It, it works very, very well. Um, is for quality connection, we came up th with three steps. Our, our retreats do three things. First, they're one on one, meaning the whole family's not coming, which might sound selfish, but it's going to be one parent, one child. So it might be you and your son, you or your daughter, but not all, because we've learned through lots of science, you got to separate the parts, strengthen the whole. So get one-on-one -on -one with your children or your spouse or whoever. You have to be one-on-one. -on -one. That's the only way to really deepen uh, the connection of a relationship. The second thing is without electronics. That's the second rule of our, our retreats. Everyone's phones have got to be off. You know, I... I Technology is wonderful. That's why I'm talking to you from Florida to California right now. But man, the studies, I mean, going back to Ned Hollowell really is a hero of mine, what it, how he's pioneered this. It's awful what it's doing. We feel more connected than ever. We have thousands of friends on Facebook. 
But there, if we're really in an issue, there's tons of people out there. They can't make one phone call to a true friend that they can talk to. They can thumbs up them. Um, but they, <laughs> yeah. there, there's, they might there's even no, like them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because there's, there's no thumbs down. So, but, but without electronics, you want to deepen the connection, get one-on-one, -on -one, turn off the phone. Not even one text, one email can totally shatter the focus. I mean, we've all learned about how to focus and get our best results. Well, the same works in relationships. You got to have the, the the emails and the phones off. And the third thing we do is experiential education, which we've been talking about this whole time. So to have a quality connection, especially with children, for any of your clients out there, get one on one, turn off your phone for at least four hours, and do something fun of their choice. And at the end, talk about it. It's really that simple. No, it's so great. And and you know, let me go to the sixth uh, pillar, which is energetic health. And we we all know that this is part of the technology that you know i think is causing it where we have all uh, the ability to play games that i mean the game industry is bigger than the movie industry by a pretty big factor and and we're not the kids aren't as active probably as you and i were when we were young and you know how do we help them you know because you know one of the things that i see so often among entrepreneurs is they're charging 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 all their life they're trading their you know health and uh, really for, you know, in the early years for their wealth. And then as we get older, so, you know, something happens and we go, ah, oh, now we got to regain our health and we're willing to trade all that money for it, but we can't. Exactly. It's crazy. And it's, it's like having a car and never getting the oil changed. I mean, how long is that car really going to last? And with, with these kids... Again, turning off the electronics to say, oh, they don't want to do is watch video games. Well, is that all you're, are you just allowing to do it? We have to make a, a clear thing of boundaries of how much they can do and get them outside. So at our retreats, we're doing, we do yoga and all sorts of, of, of body stretching and, and strength exercises, surfing and paddle boarding, are, which are incredible exercises. And we're actually doing now, which people thought at first was crazy and say it was great and the kids loved it. Not all of them would try it, but we had a, we had massage and chiropractor and acupuncturist there, things that I believe in holistically that can help. So it's not only the, the activity but the recovery, um, which I think is so important for kids to learn. I mean, my kids, they love acupuncture. I mean, people think that's crazy at that age, but, but I'm a believer in it. So we try to just do the act of doing. So like when, when we tell people to get together with their kids, I say try to make it an act, outdoor activity. I mean, I understand some kids aren't outdoors kids, but we have to encourage them and also lead by example. How many you know, successful entrepreneurs out there are carrying around the spare tire? And to walk up a flight of steps is, is extra, you know, too much work in itself. The kids see that. You, can't, you have to lead by example. In fact, it's very rare I see fit parents that have fat kids, just to be blunt. I mean, that's, I'm, I'm not saying anything mean about that, but... That's just the way it is. So we got to lead by example. And if we're all entrepreneurs, we have the space. We choose our schedule. You can choose to exercise and fit it in for yourself. So another example we try to do, everyone does these things, not just the kids. All the parents are doing these things at our retreats as well. Um, and I think it awakens some people to, to get back in, in, in the training mode. Listening to the responses from people who have gone and, you know, you know, they, they can't bring all their kids and, you know, they have to make a choice. But by doing it, the li life lessons they bring are just so amazing to the rest of the family because these, these six pillars are not just, you know, uh, parent-child. This is every relationship. These are all important. And Jim, you made an offer, so let me go to the next segment. I want to take you up on it. And this is the book of the day. You've got a great ebook uh, that uh, you're going to make available to everyone, and we'll have the link in the uh, show notes, so you can go to asnation.com. But Jim, tell us a little bit about this book and how you know the your fellow entrepreneurs can use this. Okay, great. Yeah, it's called the Family Board Meeting, and the strategy, the board meeting strategy, the Family Board Meeting strategy is what our retreats are built on. Again, like I told you, our retreats are all about getting in a beautiful environment, one-on-one, -on -one, without any electronics, using experiential education to deepen the relationship and to learn things we weren't taught in school. That's what our board meeting strategy is about. So I can explain it and again, I think 
your people will be able to pass it on to their people because it's so simple that it sticks and you can keep doing it. So the way the board meeting strategy works and what the book is about is I decided along with a group of entrepreneurs a long time ago that I was going to treat my children or my closest relationships. We'll use my children for now as the example. I was going to treat them with the same level of respect and importance as I did my largest clients and investors. And that might sound simple, but for us go, go, go entrepreneurs, it's a game changer. If you start to treat your children with the same respect as your largest clients and investors, I think you're going to see a change in how you actually react to them. Because most people I know would jump on a plane for a heart, in a heartbeat for their business, but not for their child. It's pretty interesting. So what we thought was, well, look, we all know what a board meeting is. Usually that was every 90 days, you know, a company would get together and they would have their, their board meeting to track results and you reunite the team and go out the next 90 days. That's what I do with my children. And there's only three rules to it. So every 90 days, and I've been doing this for years now, every quarter, I have a board meeting with each one of my children. Mm -hmm. And it has to be a minimum of four hours. And there are only three rules to it. And I described it with quality connection. You're going to be one-on-one. -on -one, you're going to be without any electronics. That's both of you. And you're going to do a fun activity of their choice and save time at the end for what's called a focused reflection. And that's basically fun activity with focused reflection. John, that's the shortest definition of experiential education you can use. So every 90 days, you're having a board meeting with each of your children, one-on-one, -on -one, no electronics, fun activity of their choice with focused reflection. I usually let my kids miss school once or twice a year for these board meetings, which makes them extra excited. And it's something they remember. And you want to talk about conversations of overcoming fears, um, dealing with peer pressures, uh, dealing with confidence issues. These things always seem to come out at the end of one of these board meetings after we've been together, the phone's been off, we've planned this thing, we've done an activity that they were really excited about and we spent some time talking. It works the same way in a company, these board meetings, but it's doing it for my closest relationships. And that's what the book's about. I get into some very personal things. You know, two of my sons are adopted, and we had to overcome some some real um, challenges that they had in their their earliest life before I was here. Um, and these board meeting sessions were absolutely pinnacle to that um, that deepening. Um, and we share some other stories of what happens. But it's something that I look out, John, and I know people that are doing it now for years. When my son turns eighteen. I'm going to hand him a log of all of our board meetings for the last 15 years. Oh, wow. And it, it's a yearbook. And, and now you're going to be able to look back. And, and a lot of times as entrepreneurs, we turn around and we go, holy shit, it's, it's October. And I really haven't done anything or I don't feel like I have. I never feel that way because every 90 days, of course, in between I'm spending more time. And the time in between is even more meaningful. But if I'm getting together with that format every 90 days with my children – and other people that, you know, we have thousands of testimonials now. It's a game changer and it keeps you grounded in the relationship. Yeah, I, I love uh, the concept of being successful on purpose. And we talk about that in business all the time. And, you know, the way to do that is get really clear on the outcomes that you want and schedule these progress meetings and, you know, bring the board together, your executive team on regular frequent events. And, you know, and again, we go to our most important relationships and we don't do that uh, I don't have kids, but I actually do do that, Jim, with my wife. And initially, there's a little pushback because, you know, she didn't like the idea that I would treat her as if she worked with me on a yeah. business. And she was successful at high tech on her own. But once we started doing it, it's just, it's pretty magical because the issues are addressed uh, right away and you're working on fun things together and, and, and life is good. But let me go uh, to the next segment which is the app of the day. And Jim, you know, you are, um, you have a little different app. You know, normally I'm a asking for the app on the smartphone. You, you're using one not on your smartphone. <laughs> John, you're politely saying I'm a dinosaur in search. No, so. no, I, I think there's a lot of power in writing. So why don't you share what you do? Well, I just, I've read so much about writing being crystallization. I, there's, I still write in my five minute journal every morning. And I just, when I was 20 years old, I started using the Stephen Covey planner. 
you know, planning around your biggest roles in your life and executing around them. And and you've probably seen that big beat up black thing that I carry around. It's, it comes to our masterminds. I just haven't left that. I, I do use a lot of technology, but for that one thing, there's some crystallization for me writing down my biggest responsibilities and things I'm working on that I'm just not willing to give up yet. Um, the science hasn't shown me yet that I should be all app and not writing stuff. No, so, and there's so a I'm lot still of power. using the Covey planner. So I do write, I do use a five minute journal. So we're, we're part of the way there though. I did give up the Covey one along the way, but you know, and this is, you know, whatever works for you, but let's, you know, Jim, if I just, I mean, the power of your meetings, the information I want to give uh, the next segment, which is resources. Jim, would you share, you know, what are, you know, what they, you know, your website, what they'd find, the kind of services that you guys offer? Yeah, I mean, again, uh, the, the ebook is free, but the strategy discussed involved, and it's only about 38 pages, will change your life. That's a starting point. If you really want to have a deeper, better connection with your children, read this, apply the strategy. You won't want to stop. Uh, I, I know that for a fact, and it makes a difference. And if you want to go to a deeper level about with your children, about their education, um, through an entrepreneurial mindset, you know, you can go to www.boardmeetings.com and learn more about the retreats that we do um, and why we do them, I think is pretty important as well. And there's not many things offered out there for that. And, and even just reading through the website, John, as I know you do, if you can start to teach your kids around these pillars, you know, the hell with what they're saying we need to learn in school. I don't think they need to know Abraham Lincoln's stepsister's cousin's name. I just don't believe that. I love Abe Lincoln and his message. But there's too much abstract stuff that they're not going to apply in life. So you need to take it into your hands. Another hero of mine, Richard Rossi, who's in our group, said, stop subcontracting all of your child's education out to the government. So look at these six pillars. See what you can do to get involved to teach them. Um, a book that I'll, I'll say, you know, so our boardmeetings.com, but a book that I really like, John, for, for parents out there looking for a different relationship was Outwitting the Devil. Um, have you heard of that book? Uh, yeah, I'm not familiar with it, Jim. It's actually, it's fascinating for us entrepreneur nerds um, because it was written by Napoleon Hill 78 years ago. He never released the manuscript because it was too controversial at the time. Uh, but the Hill Foundation, after the meltdown, uh, the 2008 meltdown, allowed them to release it. And it was released about three years ago. Phenomenal book. It hasn't been marketed very well, I don't think. Um, but it talks about overcoming struggles and things we can help ourselves and our children to do through struggles, because he actually wrote it just post the depression. So when people say, "What?" when you get jazzed about your, your children and learning and, and education, I mean, I love Napoleon Hill and Outwitting the Devil is, an, is a very quiet achiever book that, that I highly recommend you read. No, that's great. Well, let me do the last segment here, which is the key takeaways that I'm walking away with. I gotta tell you, uh, this has been pretty amazing. I've got all kinds of notes here. Jeff, and, you know, I'm going to just run through the pillars real quick just to remind everyone. I'm going to encourage everybody to go to AESNation.com. You know, we'll have all the links so you can uh, you know, download the ebook. You're going to want that. It's going to help you with your family tremendously and really in life lessons. But, you know, number one, that confidence mindset. And that's something that we as entrepreneurs are always working on. We know how important it is. But, you know, for all our connections and certainly our kids. Second, the entrepreneurial vision is just, it's, you know, the, we live in such an abundant, you know, beautiful world for entrepreneurs. There has never been a better time to be entrepreneurs, but most people don't understand it, including your kids don't understand what you're doing. You got to bring them along. Financial empowerment, uh, this is something I can tell you personally. I've had the privilege of working with, you know, thousands of uh, successful individuals in all walks of life and how often their kids didn't understand the, both the power and responsibility of money, and it, it, it created tremendous friction in the family. Deal with that early. Uh, conscious contributions, I mean, this is, you know, there's so much research on this, and, and boy, I, I just can't even imagine helping, you know, uh, someone who's paralyzed, you know, experiencing, you know, the ocean and the, you know, board and so on, and, and you know, really appreciation what we have and helping your kids get there. 
you know, it's so, so much of life today is entitlement and we've got to, we've got to work hard on that. And the fifth, uh, quality connections, uh, Ned Howell, a good friend of both Jim and I, and as an earlier podcast, you can um, search on the site to listen to, but he calls this connection the vitamin C. It's the other vitamin C, and we all need it. Your kids need it. You got to have positive, uh, really, connections and show them how to do it. And lastly, the energetic health. I mean, this is one that's so easy for many of us as entrepreneurs to not only neglect our health, but our kids' health, and, and it's, we've got to inspire leadership. I mean, Jim, you've done a great job of inspiring so many people, uh, making a difference in the world, and I want to thank you again for sharing your insights, and at the same time, I want to encourage everybody out there, you know, the only way this uh, gets taken care of, our relationships become powerful and productive, is if we take action. Your family's yep. counting on you. Don't let them down. Wish you the best of success. Exceptional, remarkable breakthroughs. AESNation.com.